In this video, I'll deep dive into 20 of my favorite outfits and what makes them just simply work. There are three key elements to learn and once you understand them, you'll be able to upgrade your outfits for more stylish looks. Before we begin, hi, my name is Priska and I make videos for women who value their personal style over fashion. My style is colorful, curve flattering, and more recently, warm weather since I live in Florida. For this video, I've sorted my 20 best looks into dresses, skirts, jeans, suits, and jumpsuits. Let's start with my most beloved category. The first outfit I have to show you is something a little spicy. It's a burgundy silk slip dress that I've worn so many times in different outfits, but this one is my favorite. This outfit combines a pretty basic base layer, which is the burgundy silk slip dress that is actually machine washable, and it's cut in such a flattering way. I've combined it with a waist flattering belt, a nice rich brown suede-like jacket, and some strappy heels for a look that is appropriate for evening, but not too fussy. The first element that I notice is common in most of these 20 best outfits is that there is versatility with the individual pieces. So this outfit I have worn through spring and summer and in fall or winter when it's a little bit cooler, I swap out these sandals for some boots and it's instantly a cool weather evening outfit. I've also worn this dress as a base piece for a number of different outfits and I really recommend this dress if you're looking for a pop of color as a base piece throughout the cooler months. It's from the internet brand Quince, which I've been loving lately. Their pieces are such good quality, but they're one of those like brandless brands. So you get the same piece from the same factory that makes some of your other favorite brands products, but without the label and price tag. Now, a lot of my clothes are older, but for any available pieces like this dress, I will leave the link down in the description box for you to shop. While I rely heavily on this burgundy slip dress, I also have a similar piece that is a heavy hitter for me as well. This is a red satin dress that has a faux wrap to it, and it has such a beautiful shape and sheen. However, this is not a piece that I would layer under my jacket, so I pretty much strictly wear this in spring or summer. The next one of my best outfits is this square neck midi dress in this vibrant burgundy print. And this dress is from Farm Rio, which is another brand that I've been loving lately. One of the commonalities I'm seeing here is that I really like vibrant colors and patterns, something that really packs a punch, but I don't want an outfit with so many layers to do that because I live in a warmer client. So I need to rely on my pieces to do a lot of talking without having to layer. This dress is also pretty versatile because I can wear it in the winter with boots or in the spring and fall with sandals. Since I mentioned that this is a Farm Rio dress, here are a couple of other Farm Rio dresses that I've been enjoying throughout the summer and into the fall. They all have this vibrant, rich color and pattern, and they're really good fabrics. They have a really good combination of breathable fibers with bold prints. This next outfit is based on a light blue puff sleeve sweetheart neckline midi dress that is the heroine outfit of my dreams. Somewhere along the line, I got lost in a delusion that I was the lead character in a romance novel, and I never stopped believing that, and this dress plays up that delusion. I love how sweet and romantic it is, and yet it's still appropriate for daytime. Similar to the previous dress, this is a viscose fabric, and that means it's a very breathable material to keep you cool throughout the warm months. Another thing I noticed that I love about these 20 outfits is that I have attached these memories to them of wearing them, and with this dress, one of my top tier memories is spending a wonderful day shopping and dining in Charlotte with my grandmother. So while I've worn this dress on many occasions, every time I wear it, I think of that really good memory. This dress was such a good find for me from the fabric to the style to the fit that I ended up buying the blouse version of it, which was a good blouse over the spring and summer. And in fact, I even ended up buying this dress in another fabric. This has got to be one of my favorite outfits. This is a wedding guest look I created for a wedding that was in a spring garden. And this printed dress is so springy. It's a linen material. It's the same style and fit as the previous dress, just in another breathable fabric. 
I tried to make a full look for this special occasion with pieces I'd remix for different outfits. Now this is my first time wearing a fascinator and I'm telling you if you get the opportunity, take it. Don the fascinator. It's the closest you can get to a fedora but probably more appropriate for a formal occasion. Since this was a special occasion and it was going to be a family event with lots of pictures, I try to make a full look with pieces I'd remix for different outfits and it worked. This dress has been such a lovely addition to my spring and summer wardrobe. The linen is breathable and the cut is quite lovely. The next dress I have to show you is this light blue leopard printed mini dress that I'm styling here with black knee high suede boots. I think this is just such a fun and funky look. This dress is from Rebecca Minkoff and this is a really good brand if you're into like the New York young professionals, chic, stylish kind of look. It's a versatile piece that I've worn in all four seasons, spring, summer, fall, winter, and I've styled it here with sandals just to show you how I typically wear it in the warmer months. I have just two neutral based outfits to show you, but one thing I wanted you to notice is that these neutral outfits are not going to be basic, boring, minimalistic. I'm still going to show a lot of personality by enhancing the outfits with brighter accessories. The first outfit is this ivory maxi dress that I've styled with a pink fedora and lavender belt. The base piece of this outfit can be pretty boring if it doesn't have interesting accessories and that's why I've incorporated some texture, print, and richer colors when styling this look. And although my favorite way to wear this outfit is with the pink and lavender accessories, I've also styled it with leopard, with brown, with black, and it brings a lot of versatility to my wardrobe. The next neutral dress I have to show you is this black wrap dress that I've styled with a turquoise necklace. Now that you've seen this dress, I can tell you that the third commonality in all these outfits is that there is some type of waist flattering detail. A wrap dress is a really easy way to flatter your waist but keep it comfortable. This dress is sold out but there's a very similar one from Quince that I will link down below. It's available in lots of colors and makes a really great addition to your wardrobe. Now even though I'm more known for my colorful outfits than my neutral ones, I wanted to also include these honorable mentions of neutral outfits. Just notice that they aren't boring, basic, and unstyled. They are very much styled to show some personality even though we're working with neutral colors. The final dress outfit I have to show you, let me give you the lesson before I show you the dress. Sometimes the lesson is go big or go home. Why tone it down when you can spice it up? And that is the case with this outfit. This is an all sequin wrap dress and it is such a statement piece. I think I bought it for New Year's Eve, but I've worn it to Vegas and to a couple of other occasions. I've chosen accessories with this dress that really plays up the fun and celebratory nature of it. These are actually my wedding earrings and somehow I found an outfit to wear them again. There are certain occasions, especially the holidays coming up, when it's better to wear something that is fun and in the moment than something that you would wear every day. I have two skirt outfits to show you and both of these are midi skirts. I love midi skirts for a number of reasons, but firstly for my style, I really like applying the rule of thirds which states that you can divide your outfit into one third, one third, one third, or like a top one third, bottom two thirds, which is the case of midi skirts. So it automatically applies that rule. Secondly, I am short waisted or I have a short torso, I think some people call it that. And instead of trying to balance that out, I actually like to exaggerate it because I think it makes it more interesting. And lastly, for my lifestyle, the suitability of a midi skirt cannot be beat. I never have to worry about tugging my skirt down when I'm wearing a midi, so I just prefer that length for my style and lifestyle. If you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, then you're no stranger to this first look. This is a leopard print midi skirt that I picked up at a boutique on Magazine Street in New Orleans, and I have styled this for spring, summer, fall, and winter. Leopard print midis were so popular like a decade ago, and then they were so unpopular. Well, now they're popular again. <laughs> and the lesson is that trends come and go, but you should stick with what you like as long as you feel confident in it. 
I've created so many different outfits from the skirt and I feel like it's definitely become part of my signature look. The second midi skirt I want to show you is this tonal brown satin midi skirt and I love playing with this skirt with different outfits. This one is my favorite right now. It's so good for fall. Although this isn't a breathable fabric because it's satin, the A-line cut is a very breathable cut so I am able to not get overheated in this skirt. In this look I've paired it with a t-shirt and dressed it up a little with a fun belt but I've also worn it through fall with a more brown tonal look and I think it's just really stunning. For the first jeans look, I have this kimono top with a one shoulder tank, some cream colored jeans, and a pink fedora. So this is a very stylish outfit, but I think one of the reasons why I love it is because I took a risk and it paid off. And that's definitely something that I've noticed with my style over the last few years is that when I play it safe, I don't love my outfits as much. Now sometimes it doesn't pay off, but you can avoid those kind of wonky looks by giving yourself a little bit more time of playing with your outfits, looking in the mirror, analyzing, is it really working? What can I add or take away before I step out the door? I brought this look into fall by swapping out the cream color jeans for black cropped flare jeans. And while I could have kept the pink hat with this outfit, I instead added a turquoise necklace and I think it looks so pretty. It's again that idea that two thirds of the outfit is the black jeans, one third is the olive, and the turquoise is just a small pop of color. Each piece of the outfit adds to the style story, but it's not a bunch of pieces competing for the spotlight. Before I show you the next outfit, have you ever had the friend who's like, oh, I'm just wearing jeans and a t-shirt. And you're like, you're such a brat. You're all dressed up. It's me. I'm the bratty friend. This is my version of a jeans and t-shirt outfit. This is a band t-shirt from a great concert I went to by Johnny Swim. I customized this look by creating a little V in the collar. I also sewed up the sleeves so it doesn't look like an oversized t-shirt. It really looks well fitted on me. Just by adding your own little personal flair to outfits, you can dress up something as simple as jeans and a t-shirt and feel more stylish and stunning. But I would not put this on the list if I didn't have another outfit variant that I loved with it. This is a fall outfit. I just swapped out the sandals for some fun boots with a little pizzazz on the heel and added a fun little pop of color with the belt. The last jeans outfit I have to show you is this Barbie outfit. The story of this outfit ends with I wore it to see the Barbie movie this summer, but it starts in Italy where I purchased them at a cost store that looked like this. I mean, honestly, if your store looks like this, take my freaking money. Now I'm not one to spend over $100 on a piece that I don't see myself wearing every month, but here's the story of these jeans. This beautiful store was across the street from our hotel in Florence. And we walked through the store in the morning where I spotted these jeans, which began an all day internal dialogue about the practicality of such a piece. Then after a five course dinner and perhaps a glass of wine, we were wandering at home. I sent Russell up to the hotel, went back into the store, felt so happy and Florentine and you know that feeling when you're just traveling you're like nothing else exists except for here and now. That's how I was feeling so I purchased these fabulous pantalones. While that decision wasn't the most logical or sound one I've ever made, I'm so happy I did that because I've created quite a few outfits that I love with these jeans. Okay I just had a great idea. Maybe. <laughs> so question for you. Would you be interested in hearing some of my travel style stories? If you're interested in travel outfit stories, then let me know down in the comments. This last outfit in this category is not a pair of jeans, but I feel like it fits. These are orange sherbet linen trousers with a silk scarf top that I made up for a photo shoot when I was in Florida last summer. I think what I love about this outfit is that it just has so much spice and pizzazz and while I wouldn't wear it like on a Tuesday to go to the grocery store, it's an outfit that looks so good at the beach for an evening dinner without being too overly dressed. And on top of that, this scarf is actually a scarf so it's really versatile. As I was coming through my photos to find my 20 best outfits, I was really surprised to see that there are three suits that make the list. 
The first one is this magenta leopard print suit that I actually rented from Rent the Runway. I mean, first off, the sheen of this suit is too melt for. It's so beautiful. I will say that if you're going to rent an item from Rent the Runway, make it something spicy, something you wouldn't necessarily want to purchase and keep in your closet for a decade. But that's the point of renting is that you can have a little bit more fun and play without the risk of committing to a piece. The next suit I have to show you is also a rental. This is such a little spicy print. It's an Italian brand called Sofizio. I rented this suit from Rent the Runway for my trip to Italy, which was ironic. I rented a suit that was made in Italy and I brought it back to its homeland. Anyway, I didn't realize this until this trip, but suits are such great pieces to have in your travel wardrobe because you can wear it as an outfit, you can wear just the pants, you can wear just the blazer, and I definitely had some wonderful memories in Italy wearing this suit. Okay, can I talk about Italy like one last time? Because I have a suit that I bought in Italy I had such a good feeling when I saw this suit and I'm so glad that I ended up buying it even though I was questioning whether I would wear it that often. But I wanted to bring that feeling of traveling and just being in the moment. I wanted to bring that home and I thought I could do that with this suit. While that is a really good shopping memory, I also have another wonderful memory associated with the suit. I recorded my first viral YouTube video wearing it. And so since then, I've just felt like it's sort of like my, not good luck charm, but more of like a mood booster. I've worn this jacket over some jeans as just a way of bringing a bright pop of color to a winter outfit. And so I really do stand by that suits are good pieces in your wardrobe because you can wear them in a number of versatile outfits. The last category that I have in my 20 favorite outfits is jumpsuits. Now jumpsuits get a lot of hate from the internet, but they're still a favorite of mine. This first jumpsuit is a purple floral explosion print jumpsuit from the kit New York City. And I have loved wearing this jumpsuit. It is a cotton twill, it's pretty thick. So it's not really summer appropriate, but fall, winter, definitely so. One thing that I very much appreciate with this jumpsuit is the tie belt that comes with it and is actually part of the detail of the jumpsuit. So it's not a separate piece. It actually really just forms that jumpsuit into a figure flattering piece. While I've had some good memories in this jumpsuit, I also had an unfortunate accident that required me to learn how to use a sewing machine. Oh my gosh. The next outfit is this groovy blue jumpsuit. And my husband says that this looks kind of like a flying squirrel, which I don't hate, honestly. I bought this jumpsuit in Sedona and I really wanted to bring that groovy, carefree, fun loving vibe home. So I bought this jumpsuit. The thing I really like about jumpsuits is that it's a one piece wonder. You only have to focus on one really great piece for your outfit. So speaking of, I say the best for last. If I were an outfit, this is who I would be. Vibrant, groovy, and slightly impractical. This pink satin jumpsuit is such a vibe. I bought this for a trip to Miami, but I've worn it several times since. I think I wore it on my 30th birthday, actually, so lots of good memories there. This jumpsuit is not the best quality piece I've ever worn, but hey, it's fun for a party. Sometimes you just need a little festive piece to match your mood. Those are my 20 best outfits, and since you liked this video, I would recommend watching this one next. It's my 20 worst outfits and how I fix them. I'll see you next week with a brand new video, but until then, take care.